Hey dudes, what's good? WMG here with another video. Um, <clears throat> I'm just gonna get started here. This is video number four, I think, of how to start a Pico Reef. This video I'm gonna be doing a lot um, with preparing. I'm just cleaning up uh, just some dust that's inside the tank right now. Uh, you'll probably know by now that I'm using uh, this three gallon Pico tank. I picked up a few years ago. I used to have it set up, uh, but since I moved everything to the 36 gallon, I am setting it up again. Um, if you've watched my old videos, and I suggest you do on this one, on this uh, playlist, uh, I built the stand, solid wood, nice, really clean, and I'll be doing a lot in this video. Alright, so. Uh, one of the first things you're going to want to do probably when you start a tank is make sure it's clean, especially if it's a used tank like this one. This one still has a little bit of coralline algae stuck to the sides and I'm just cleaning it off um, and making sure that it's that it's ready and then drying it after that. So just to let you know, this is probably going to be a, a long video, uh, but hopefully you enjoy it. So I'm starting here with the background. I had a little bit paper, uh, a little bit of paper left over from when I did the 36 gallon, and I really liked the the black background. Not too much the blue, but the black it looked really nice because it, it had a, a proper contrast that you know made the corals pop. Uh, this tank was painted. I did paint. I did paint the back with uh, acrylic black paint and I liked it but the problem is the salt creep after a while kind of started to dissolve the the, the paint so since I know this tank is a perfect cube I'm just going to I mark the top of it with this magic marker um, dry erase marker so I'll be able to wipe it off later I'm just gonna cut it here and then I'm going to show you how I like to uh, put it on the back. Now, if you have, if you don't have drill uh, holes, if you didn't drill holes on the back of your tank, then this is super easy. You just cut the size and you just tape it onto the back of the tank. Now, as you can see on mine, I did drill the hole, so it makes it a little trickier, and it's it's hard to it's, you could imagine it's hard to figure out exactly where the holes are and then just cut the right shape of the hole so that it doesn't look like a whole mess but I've come up with a really good way on how to how to you know approximize the where the holes are going to be and a good way on how to cut the holes so that they fit and it looks much better and you don't have to be as accurate with it so I'm just gonna line it up here as best as I can. I'm going to take the magic marker or the, the dry erase marker and I'm going to just guess about where the center of the bulkhead is. Alright, the center of it. I'm going to do it on both sides. It doesn't have to be absolutely precise, but it just, you know, has to be a, a good guess on, on where it is. Okay? Now, just give me a second and I'll show you how I actually do the cuts. Right, I've kind of zoomed in here and flipped the tank over so I have a, a, a place I can cut on. Basically, I'm taking this razor and I'm doing cross-sectional cuts across the the dot that I made. In other words, the dot being in the center. And I'm just making six cuts. Yeah, no. Four cuts. Yeah, four cuts uh, across from it. Doing, doing like a cross pattern. And I'll show you here what I'm doing all right you see what I did there the center is where the point was okay that way you can just slide the you can slide it through the bulkhead and as long as your cross-sectional cuts are you know okay then it'll be better and the more cuts you do the better it'll it'll turn out but I think four is enough and it looks fine all right now um, in a second here I'm going to slide it onto the bulkhead so you can actually see um, how it looks. And I think it looks pretty good and this might be this this might just be the best way to do it because it's much easier 
and wasting your time trying to measure it and trying to get it perfect and if it's not perfect and you actually cut a hole then you will be able to see it when you look through the tank and that's just a pain in the butt really so I'm just gonna try to slide it here and to make sure you do the right side so that I mean for me it's important because one bulkhead is, is slightly higher than the other bulkhead so make sure you do the right side <laughs> okay so there it is just sl slides on really easily and I've made the I've made the square just a slightly larger so that I can cut the excess off later but as you can see it's, it's really easy if you do it if you do it this way now, there might be other ways and if you do know other ways on how to do this put it in the comments below because this sometimes is a really big pain in the butt <laughs> I'm gonna fast forward this real quick, but basically what I'm doing is just taping the corners down uh, on each side just to make sure that it's flat. The looser it is, the more you'll be able to tell through the front of the tank that it's not actually painted. So try to make it as tight as possible. But the black, the black really helps to not be able to tell. If the background is blue, you can kind of tell more that it's not actually um, uh, painted in front so I'm just gonna put a little bit more tape and then if you want to you can take uh, a razor and cut the excess off of the the edges which is super easy but here's the front of the tank you can see it and it looks really good I'm just gonna cut it off cut the excess off but you can see in the front that it's that it looks great and there's no reflection um, I'm gonna do the, the the tubing right now, the plumbing. And as you guys know, I'm a big fan of using uh, using flexible tubing because it's hard, it's easier to fit, and um, it's easier to move, and it's quieter. Um, since I'm moving quite a bit, flexible tubing makes this whole ordeal a lot better. Um, also, it's important for you to for you to use clamps, those metal rings. Um, or plastic rings to clamp down the tubing so that you know you don't get like a spill later pressure builds up and the tube flies off then you got water pumping everywhere that's not going to be pretty so here it is done with the with the plumbing and those are the clamps that I were talking about those are the screw ones I've got uh, two two power strips uh, on a piece of board down there for uh, the, the electrical requirements for the tank but there it looks pretty good it's basically a duplicate of what I did before um, with just some more uh, metal clamps to ensure safety um, next I'll be showing you what it looks like from the front in the sump it's gonna look pretty much the same as, as the old tank but I'll show you guys anyway so here we go here it is um, uh, uh, input into the sump on the left, output on the right with a one-way valve. Um, pretty standard stuff. On the back of the tank, I have uh, some some nozzles with with the uh, with switches on them, so I can control the flow. Um, just to silence it and make sure you know everything is good and balanced. Here we're uh, we're looking at the display again, and I'm gonna start the actual process. I'm gonna put in the sand first. Um, and then the water and such. Now, um, this sand was the sand that I used in in this tank beforehand. So it's the same amount of sand. But I've heard a lot about people saying don't use the same sand. Things are gonna die in it. Um, you know, you're gonna go through a cycle. Blah blah blah. And it's it's dirty. Well, this is all true. And it's up to you whether you want to use the same sand or not. I'm using the same sand because I know that I've washed this sand. Oh, it's it's basically bleached. Okay, I wash the sand a lot. Now, I don't have a video of me doing it. But when I took out the sand from this tank and I washed it, I must have washed it. I must have rinsed it and shaken it up like ten times and the water was coming out black just from the garbage that was in it from before which is fine so I just continue to wash it until there was basically nothing in it anymore basically when I was done cleaning it the water was coming out of it just crystal clear 
okay so because I'm doing that well it's dead sand obviously and usually people like to use live sand but when you put live sand into a tank and you put water in the tank uh, the water clouds up a lot now because I clean this so rigorously there won't be there the water will basically be clean and I'll show you uh, I'll post another video of an update later like day three maybe and the water will I guarantee the water will be absolutely clean but you'll see it at the end of this video all done and what aquascaped and everything so you'll be able to see that alright so there's the first step or maybe the first step of setting up the display tank at least so here's the rock that I that I'm planning to use I put it on this tile on the floor um, I got this from the cycled rock that was in the other tank I'm just gonna show you the pieces real quick now these are pretty old pieces like I said they've been cycling for four to five months a really long time so they are really good as soon as I put them in the tank they'll just continue on filtering these they do have um, these guys already have some filter feeders on them these little sponge like little, little filter feeders but I'm gonna show you in the tank okay I'm spinning this up again the aquascape I pretty much know what I want to do so this is gonna be uh, pretty quick I'm just gonna do like a little mountain looking thing with uh, with a with a, a cave in the center for if fish want to go in um, I like this part of the build a lot it kinda shows you know your creativity with what you're gonna do now I may I may change this later but I'm not sure so I'm putting all the pieces in and I'll be gluing them in place with uh, some super glue not not permanent but just to hold it together so that the corals don't fall off. Okay, so I'm going to start putting in the water now. Um, I mentioned before that I'm skipping the... I'm going to just completely skip the cycle. Of course, you know, I mentioned it before, I was using the, the, the rocks been cycled. Uh, filtration media has been cycled. The only thing that's not cycled is the sand, which will grow um, bacteria itself. But uh, this water I'm using is like 10% uh, the water that the that the water wa rock was cycling in, um, and about 60% uh, tank from my 30 uh, water from my 36 gallon, and the rest is freshly made salt water. Now you might be looking at it and be wondering why is it that the water is so clear? Um, I mentioned it before, but the the sand, which usually carries the most like fine grain dust that that gets suspended in the water column, it was thoroughly rinsed and cleaned out. It was the water was coming out crystal clear, so so the sand has absolutely nothing left in it to make the water dirty that's why it's coming out so clear now you can't tell here in this video and in, in this clip at least but uh, I did speed up the 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 clip so that you won't have to sit through the whole thing but through the end of this clip I'm adding my little uh, my smallest clownfish that I had in my 36 gallon here it is alright this clownfish is a uh, is like a, a semi Picasso clownfish um, now he's small and I I really hope I'd really like to get another clownfish for this tank but I mean I picked him up for $12 when I was in Virginia and that's ridiculous a price so I highly doubt up here in Maryland I'm gonna find one for that price so I'm probably just gonna find a an oscillaris that he can he can be with yeah it's in that specimen tank there's also a little Nazarius snail too but Hopefully I can pick up uh, an, another one, so another clownfish, so that he won't be so lonely, I guess. And maybe a shrimp, too, and a few more cleanup crew stuff. But, yeah, basically, that is the setup process. Next, I'll be showing you how I made the top and doing the light fixture, and, and then that'll be it. All right, so I'm out here on my balcony, and uh, I pre-cut the pieces for the uh, for the top uh, originally I was just thinking I can cut this netting thing put a couple magnets on the corners and then put some magnets on the tank and then just set it up that way I actually did try it and it turned out horribly 
So uh, I cut the pieces of wood and um, I'll just gonna make basically a frame and put the put the netting in the frame make sure it's tight so that it doesn't touch the water. I don't know if it matters if the netting does touch the water but but uh, I don't like it. So here's the basic overlay and there'll be another bar at the bottom when I cut that piece. But I'm gonna nail these together make sure they're tight and then see how it looks when I'm done. Alright so here's basically what it looks like after I've done all the edges um, and just putting the finishing touches on it um, just to make sure it's stable. Um, like I mentioned it's basically like a picture frame like a very ugly picture frame and with the with the net in the middle. I got this netting from uh, from Home Depot it's the one they use for screens. Screens I think that's what they call it. Okay, and then that's basically it. You can put more nails on the back just to make sure it's tight. That's what I did. And then, all right, so let's see it. Let's see what it looks like on the tank. Okay, so here we are, and uh, I put it on, and I think it looks great. It's really clean, and it does its job. <laughs> I've learned too many times <laughs> that fish can jump out and shrimp can jump out and I've been yelled at plenty of times by my girlfriend so this time I am definitely just putting this stupid thing on alright we've all probably lost some fish um, <laughs> for not having a, a top on especially when you're taking the fish from a big tank and putting it into a smaller tank it's a pain alright here you can see my fish and he's actually very very tiny um, so I think this tank is going to be just right for him. So I could do this in another video, but I figured let's just do it all in one. I'll show you the, you know, the basics of what I'm doing. And if you guys have questions or want me to do another video on what I did specifically, I'll just uh, do another video on that. I mean, I'm sure I'll do other videos on it, but right now I'm worried about uh, the lighting I told you before I really like the clean look and this egg crate stand thing is just like not doing it for me so basically I'm going to take this rod I'm going to bend it at a 90 degree angle and I'm going to install it here on the back of the tank just really easy I'll just drill a hole same size as the rod into the into the wood in the back and then I'll just hang the fixture from that uh, I'll show you in the next clip the fixture and how I uh, how I attach the rod to the fixture. It was pretty easy, just requires some patience and some some work. All right, so here's what I'm doing. Um, I have my soldering iron here. Um, I'm just gonna take apart this light. This is the old light that I was using on the on the same tank beforehand. Uh, beams work light. It's got nine LEDs on it. And it did really well. I really loved it. Um, so definitely not going to change. I'm just going to use the same one. Now, in my earlier videos, you probably remember that this this uh, this light fixture had a gooseneck on it. And after a while, the gooseneck just rusted, didn't want to work, and the back where uh, where it kind of bolted onto the corner of the aquarium just broke off. Cheap plastic. And I tried to fix it, but it's a pain in the ass. So I'll be doing that 90 degree bent metal. So it's funny that the 36 gallon um, is kind of like the prototype for this tank. And this tank was a prototype for the 36 gallon. So it kind of works out. So I really wanted to get that gooseneck off. So I'm going to be desoldering the contacts and just put the, and just pull the little cord through the, through the frame of the, of the, of the light fixture. So I can just get rid of that gooseneck altogether. So here's what I've done. I've just uh, cut the the heat sink off of the off of the fixture. The back of the fi fixture was just one big aluminum heat sink. So I just cut into it, and then I put this bolt onto it that holds the holds the the the, the metal rod. Right, just got from Home Depot. Paid two bucks for it, or it was like. It was like 99 cents, real cheap, and does a great job. Okay, and uh, here we are after I've installed it. Now, I was really impressed. This is the same day, by the way, so the water, you can tell how clear the water is, right? So this is the same day. 
I installed the light fixture and you can just tell right you can just tell that this looks way better look infinitely better than having that egg crate uh, stand on it not only that but this blocks the light way less right I had this thing on it and you know <laughs> like I said before I really like the clean look this looks absolutely awesome right I, I it looked it looks much better than I thought it did excuse me so um, I painted it the same black but I painted it a rubber and you can't tell here too much because of the light but I painted it a rubber uh, a rubber coating on the metal just like I did with a 36 gallon so the light looks brand new and nothing sticks out nothing is like silver shiny that you know it's the metal's original color so it doesn't stick out and it looks sharp it looks so sharp I wire tied the, the the wire and as you can see I can just move the light out of the way real easy it looks it looks awesome okay um, you can buy you know light fixtures um, light fixture holders you know but um, <laughs> this 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 light fixture project literally cost me four dollars to do and it looks awesome okay so I mean you can just tell like, it might be worth you actually doing it yourself because it can turn out way cheaper and look really really good so um, I guess this is the end of the video now. Here's the whole tank set up. Next, I'll just be doing updates and such of uh, how to start a Pico and adding corals and fish and whatever. So, thank you so much for watching. I appreciate it. I know it was a long video, but I felt like is this kind of captured the whole putting it together. Um, so, thanks for watching. Please subscribe if you like this. Uh, this this video this channel this whatever okay and comment to give me more ideas of what the next ones should be I have to admit that this this uh, was really short on how to how to set it up because basically there were just a few steps to setting up the the cycling doing the, the stand and and setting everything putting everything together basically um, so thank you for watching again please leave a like Subscribe and comment. I will read your comments. Um, send me any questions if you have any. And I'll see you guys in the next video. See ya.